Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. Today, we start on the main post for the garage carport, but it was uh, five months ago now when we ordered and collected the uh, Douglas fir posts and siding for the complete sides of the garage so it's had plenty of time to dry and uh, we do prefer going for the raw sawmill lumber than buying it direct from the uh, builders merchants well we got back safely with all the wood a thousand euros worth of timber here we got the uh, the Douglas fir siding Okay, call it Bardage in France. Then I've got some uh, coffrage wood, which is um, the forms uh, for the concrete. And then we've got our big posts for the garage. You're all done? Yes. Yes, I've even hoovered up after myself. Could have stay to you. Yeah, I know, but I've tried. Okay, yeah. Don't laugh. <laughs> I'm trying try cleaning myself. No, I've got a better idea. <laughs> all right, this is the best way. <laughs> no way. Turn around. Now Julie's done a really good job on sanding these uh, posts. I'm going to run a plane down the corners just to round them off a tiny bit, not really to make any uh, bevel or anything, it's just to take the sharpness of the corner off. Now those edges are all um, sort of just taken off slightly, I've got to uh, square up these ends. First thing first, just going to measure off 2.5, just to make sure. Yeah, so it's 2.52, so they've given me two centimetres extra. That's not too bad. Uh, there's a little ridge there, but uh, that's quite good. I'm gonna have to watch that crack though there. So I will uh, pre-drill bigger lag bolts into there. Let's just check the squareness. That is pretty good. Right, jump in the car off to the plot and get these two uh, base plates and get these. Uh, I'm gonna put them in in the workshop here. Just got down to the plot. Here they are, these are the two. And uh, what they'll do, they'll come over and sit just underneath this post and basically sit on the concrete like that. And the post sits on that. And then at top, it's fixed onto the, uh, the metal beam. Right, back at the shop. Um, I've actually recut the ends. Uh, the first two were too many cracks and one piece just fell out. So I wasn't pretty, I'm not happy about it. So I've swapped to the other end recut those, both of them, and now I'm going to position the, um, the plate on the bottom.
So I've set my square to four and a half and I've just marked around all the way around and that fits exactly in the center. Just get this done before the uh, the pads go on. All right, so I'm just about to put a few layers of this um, varnish on the beams. That's the first time we've seen this actual colour on this particular wood. This is Douglas fir, so we weren't too sure how light it was going to come out. But this is actually, this is nice because we want to keep a nice modern look, not all dark wood. That's one coat done. Um, we're planning on using this colour for the whole of the garage workshop siding. Again, that's Douglas fir. I like the colour. I'm just, yeah, just drop a comment below. Just let us know what you think of the colour. So it's time, time to put the, uh, the base plate on. Um, I gave it a quick lick of the grey paint that the whole of the garage is painted in. Um, just thought I think it would match a bit better. So this is going to go on like that. What I did buy though, I thought I was being clever, slightly longer bolts, but as you can see, they don't quite fit. So I've got to uh, wiggle them in somehow and then place them on the bottom. The two posts that we're installing today are just to finish off the overall design of the carport with the fake uh, beams above. Um, they don't serve any structural element within the garage and now it looks like a bit of a barn. Right, I'm doing a crucial cut here. This is the first cut of my middle post and I'm just cutting it off to the uh, height of the under ceiling, so to the ceiling basically. And that's uh, 2.47 meters. And then I'm gonna have to cut out along here for the uh, false beam to sit in.
cutting this beam, Ian seems to be eating through all the batteries. It's also against the, you know, along the drain. That saw didn't last long. <laughs> My new one, because that last one, remember when I was cutting the, um, the metal purlins, the actual mechanism for the blade broke. I mean, I've already fixed it once. So I've got a couple of batteries that I bought just in case I bought a Ryobi. I haven't been able to use them, but uh, now I can. So let's see. <laughs> All right, it's near enough there. I'm gonna finish off with the hand saw. So I'm just using my laser level again to find the plum using uh, the bottom to the top. Oh, I've got right on it. That was a pretty good guess. All right, I'm just gonna mark off that here. So my base is 100 exactly. So that's gonna be 2186, 2186, 2186. So that is where my bracket has got to sit. It's such a shame. I couldn't just slide this on, but uh, I'm gonna to have to cut this section out here for the bracket. And then re put this little piece back in. That's my thoughts. Good morning, we're back on site. Sun's out, look. We couldn't uh, resist last night, just stopping and finishing off that post up there. Although it is a bit short, so not short, we need to shorten it slightly. Uh, so that's the first task this morning, um, where I laser measured it for the metal tab, perfect, but for the underside of the false beam, not so perfect, because I didn't laser that one. Right, so uh, we'll get on with that now, hopefully get these both posts in finished today. Yeah. Can you see the graph? Yes, on the way. Okay. I'll take you Take the weight again. Station. Hold on, hold on. Tell me when. Okay. Using the uh, plunge saw again today, uh, just the little saw. It's the same size blade, but at least this is mains powered, where well, it's coming from the EcoFlow. Um, and also for the precise, I've got to take a slither off. Um, so using the track just allows me to be a bit more precise. And hopefully I won't run out of battery. Okay, now we've got to go deeper because this is only 165 blade. I could do really with a uh, a bigger one, but how many times I'm going to do big posts like this? I don't know. So uh, let me figure out this hand saw. I think so, just for the uh, because this will be on show. <sighs> I think I'm going to be here a while, so uh, I'll see what it's done. Well, Ian's just left me on site. He's gone off to um, the local store to get a saw because he's going to be here all day if he's using that little teeny weeny saw and all his other ones, they're blunt. So he's just gone off to buy a new one and hopefully it won't be too long. Right, couldn't deal with that little tiny saw on that huge uh, 
post. So here I am. So I'm just going to pick up a proper saw, which I didn't realize I didn't own one. Well, not a decent one anyway. So, uh, right, quickly back to site. Oh, you got one. Cool. Oh, right. Let's see. This should work all right. They're so cheap. Ridiculous, really, for what they are. Oh, no. The years I used to watch dads sharpen his, all his saws and they just throw away now. It's so different. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's give it a go. Hopefully this is might will be better. I think Keen's wishing we'd never chose such big beams now. Oops. Who chose? Uh, her hurt me. <laughs> While Ian was away, I set up the coffee station. I thought I'd be nice to him today. I've even brought him a biscuit. Oh, oh <sighs> too good to you, Ridey. Quite civilised now. Put my finger out. <laughs> oh, such a gent. Oh. It's nice to be able to have something here. It's actually nice and warm. Well, not warm. The sun's out, which warms everything up. But um, now the wind's dropped. That first thing in the morning here in the Pyrenees, we get lots of wind, absolutely freezing cold wind. So we tend to come up here just about 10 o'clock at the moment. And uh, that's just when the sun's coming up above the mountain and the wind drops again. So uh, it's nice now. We just offered the beam up and um, we forgot that the roof slopes. It's not a slope, it's a small part of that uh, purling that sticks out. Yeah, so what we've got to do is um, he's just marked the top of the, the post and he's just going to cut that angle now. This is the type of work I prefer. No concrete dust, no metal dust, just sawdust. Not it? No. <laughs> testing the uh no, that's just to say that you're in the village <laughs> everybody's taking a runner so you don't start talking to them i don't know what you mean ian oh. <laughs> it must be a weekly thing on a wednesday yeah they don't seem to be doing it regularly we never hear this in our village right so we've taken that beam out and now we're drilling into the uh, concrete for the bolts. Yeah. Now I'm not going to go too deep because uh, I can't get the bolt. I can now because I've cut this one off. I can just get this one in. Like uh, when you saw me putting in these bolts this way, it's hard to get them in. And because I'm, this is such a tight fit, I can't pre put the bolts in and then rest it on. Um, I, I could do if I took all this off, but it's such a pain. So what I'm going to do is position it, put these, but not use the uh, the uh, the, um, the hammer method. I'm just going to make oversize these holes and put in um, some chemical cement and then drop these in. Because all these bolts are doing is stopping it move that way or that way. It's got no you know, strength, stru uh, structural uh, strength. That's the plan. I'm just oversizing the hole, just 
so these just drop in and I don't have to hammer them in. So I'm just putting a 12 down now. This is the uh, the chemical stuff we use. It's a French make, but uh, it's basically just a, a resin that mixes up in this little pipe. And after only a few minutes, it's set solid, so. So now I need to bolt this bracket that I did in the workshop down into the top of the post. Well, I've got another problem now. It's going to go in at an angle and I don't want that. But on my last build, nearly 25 years ago, my biggest purchase was this little right angled Makita drill. Um, God, it cost a fortune at the time and it was the only sort of proper tool that we bought for that build in the whole time. And um, it broke and it was in the bottom of my toolbox, but uh, I managed to find a battery on Amazon and the little charger for it. And works perfectly now. So I should be able to uh, get in here and drill straight down my pilot hole. It's not the most powerful compared to modern day kit, but it's doing it. Just gonna put these in the top. And I thought about this section here, whether I put a, fill it in with a bit of wood, but that would look a bit messy. I might just put a, a metal, a steel plate on here. And then that means I can get access to all of this if necessary, but just um, a metal plate and the same color might sort of finish it off a little bit. Well, it's finally in. I did have to uh, take it off from the top and um, take a little bit of material out because the end brace over here the uh, the scaffold bar that I've uh, pumped up with the jack wasn't in place because it was holding this part of the board up and of course it flexed over by about 0.3 of a degree so when we put this in of course this was 90 I put that back up to make sure it was all square again and it pushed this slightly off so I brought this back probably five millimeters at the top and it's all now plumb and, and equal to the other ones. And I'm going to leave that prop in there until we get some siding on to give it some uh, sheer strength. So uh, it's in. I've got four bolts to tighten up at the bottom and I'm going to do that now. <sighs> oh, that is definitely gone off. Any annoyance from it is now this isn't central to my post, but uh, it's only me hopefully that will notice that. So we've got the laser out again because we've moved on to this end beam, the final beam. Right, I'm onto the corner post. Um, I've already done the, the cutout for the false beam and that was exactly the same as the, uh, the other one. Um, except without the center part for the bracket. But what I do have is this I-beam, which is gonna go at a diagonal across the back of this. So I'm gonna have um, two cutouts uh, on two sides. I'm trying to do as much so I can hide the metal as much as possible with the beam, um, instead of adding extra you know, wood onto it to, to patch it all up. So yes, lots of uh, calculations here. 
coming round and then I'm going to be cutting it out so that hides the end. That's what I like to see, old school carpentry. Chisel and hammer. Be nice because I'm making a cup of coffee. At least when Julie has to go back to get uh, go to the toilet, the bathroom, um, she can bring back her latest creations. Ah, jam everywhere. We're having afternoon tea. Oh my God, you got enough jam on there. And scones, cream tea. pretty when I did them, they look like a massacre now. Ooh. A little coal face, should put it a little bit at a time. Dogs off in the village. <laughs> it's done, Ian. Right, so that is the posts, the false posts, because then nothing is structural about them whatsoever. But the um, the size of them make them look structural, and it finishes off this part of the carport. It closes it all in. Um, so sort of the next part of the wood part of the project, we're gonna to have to clad this I-beam on the front and start closing that in. And that's why I've got the gap here. You might thought I've just cut it wrong, but that actually, the, the cladding will slide down behind there. So I think we're gonna leave it for, the, for this video. Um, it's quite a lot of woodwork and my arms are absolutely knackered. But uh, if you like these videos, give us a thumbs up and press that subscribe. And we will see you in the next video, um, either cladding or concrete or I'm not sure yet, but we'll see you then. Bye for now.